Hello all, welcome to the channel Cloud Knowledge. Today in this video, we will study about an Azure Data Factory scenario where we will save the output of the web activity into a blob. That is, whatever is the web activity output coming to us in the form of let's say JSON, which we are reading through a REST API, we want to save that output into a storage account in the form of a JSON file, let's say. Okay, so how we will accomplish it? We will demonstrate in this video. So let's go to the data factory and create the pipeline. So we'll go to the author tab and here we'll create a new pipeline and we'll name the pipeline as pipeline web activity output to blob. Okay, web output blob. We have named it and now we want to add the web activity here okay so web activity lies under the general tab with the name as web so we will take it and drag it the canvas so this is web activity one we can give it a name as read rest api okay so we have named the First web activity is read rest API because in this web activity we are going to get the data from a sample or a dummy rest API URL. Okay. So this is the general tab. Only thing we changed is the name. Okay. For better readability. Now we will go to the settings tab and here the first option is the URL. Okay. The rest API URL. In our case, the first web activity is to read the data from the REST API and the REST API we are going to use is a dummy REST API. Let's search for the URL dummy REST API. If we search here, it will give us the different sites. Okay, we can use any one of this and try to use the get method to read this REST API data. So let's go to the dummy dot REST API example. And here we'll go further down. So here you can see that we have the employee related data. Get all employee data. Okay. And the URL is given here. Okay. The method used will be get and will be of JSON type. So we will just copy this URL as well as we will open it in a new tab so that we can see the contents of this URL. So it has the employee related data, ID, employee name, salary, etc. And it is present for 23 employees. Okay, 23 employees data is present. And this is what we are going to configure in the data factory. So we'll go back here in the web activity and we'll paste the URL which we have copied. Okay, so the URL is so the URL is this one, the full root. Okay. We have copied and we have pasted here. Okay. The URL is pasted. Now we have to define the method, REST API method for the target endpoint. As we know that this is the get method. We will be getting the employee data. So we will use the API method as get. Okay. So we'll select the API method to get the data. Next is the authentication. We will leave it as none. There is no requirement of authentication. So this is done. So the settings is done. Next step is to validate this web activity and then try to publish the changes. And now after publishing, we will perform a debug run. See here, our read REST API is executing and we will check whether this is working fine and it is fetching the data from the REST API URL we have given. Okay, so it is in progress. Let's wait for its completion. It succeeded. And now here we can see the input given to it. Okay, we have given the URL method header was none and we will get the output here. So we'll click on the output icon and we can see the complete data status data ID 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 till 23. Okay, till 24. Sorry, there were 24 IDs. Okay, same data which was present here we have received now. So we have got all the data 
in this web activity now our next job is to save this data that is the output data which we have received from the rest api to a storage account in the form of a json file okay so how we will accomplish that for that purpose we will use another web activity so let's take another web activity in the canvas and we will attach the first web activity to the second web activity okay and we'll click on the second web activity which we will name as save output to blob okay so we are going to save the output to a storage account container okay so here the name we have given the next is the settings tab in the settings tab we have to give the url target endpoint and path so here in the second web activity we are saving the output to the blob that is we are writing the data okay we are sending the data from here that is the web activity to the storage account while on the contrary in the first web activity what we did is we fetched the data from the rest api that means we get the data and in the second one we are putting the data that's why here the method used will be put okay where we are putting the data is the storage account inside a container so this url we have to define the storage account and this url will be of a storage account container url and we have to give our adf access to that url too so let's go to the storage account we have in place let's go here so in my resource group i have a storage account called as cloud knowledge gen2 it is a gen2 storage account and if we go in the containers tab we have different containers here okay and for our web activity scenario we will make a new container so let's click on container plus container we'll name it as web activity output okay let the public access level be private and then create so the web activity output container is created we will click on this container upon clicking the container now we do not have any file in it and we will want this place to land the file from the web activity output okay we want here the file to be saved so at this location of the storage account container we want to give the data factory web activity access right the data factory should access this particular container so for that purpose inside this container in the storage account we have under the settings share access tokens note it that under the settings we have shared access tokens okay here we have to give the permissions okay signing method account key signing key we'll leave it as is will come down to the permissions and here we have to give the permission of read add create and write okay so write is important because here we are going to add or write the data okay at this container level so we'll select all these four permissions and here the start and expiry date time is given so it is starting today let's say and we want to give the expiry time too so that this access shared access token will expire also on the day which we have given here so let's make it till tomorrow okay and allowed protocols will leave it as is and generate and click on generate sas token in url so once we click on it will give you the blob sas token and the blob sas url okay so the url for the blob sas we will copy so we will copy this url and we will paste it somewhere okay here we have pasted the url so here the url has the storage account name then the folder name and then a question mark with other relevant details okay that is the token related details okay so right after the container here we have to manually give the file name with which we want to get the blob generated so we'll give a forward slash and the file name so let's name it as Give the name as web activity output dot json. So what we did is we gave the file name along with the storage account name and the container name in the blog sas URL. 
So we'll copy this blob SAS URL now and we'll go back to the ADF and we'll paste in the URL of this second web activity. So let's paste it here and the method we have already selected as put because to this URL we are going to put the data received from the previous web activity. Now comes the third option which is the body. It represents the payload that is sent to the endpoint. So what will be the payload? In the payload we have to give the dynamic content and it should be the output received from the previous web activity. So we'll click on add dynamic content here and here we'll give the REST API output. So we'll select the activity output. The name of the previous web activity was read REST API. So it is showing up here and dot output. Okay. So we'll click OK. Body is done. So we'll leave the authentication as none because we have already authenticated using blobs as URL. Then comes the headers. We have to give the header here. So we'll click on new. Okay. So here in the headers, we have to give the blob type. And if we go to the put blob related headers, which are used while configuring the URL. Okay. We will get the details. So let's go to a page here. Put blob from URL. Okay. So this is the section put blob from URL. If we go, this is under the REST API, REST related standard documentation by Microsoft. Put blob from URL. So what we are doing from the URL, we are putting the blob. And here, if we search for the headers XMS blob, we will get the blob type. Okay. So this is required XMS blob type. And this is the request header, one of the request header, which states that it specifies the type of blob to create, which must be block blob. If the blob type is in block blob, the operation fails with status code 400. So what we'll do, we'll use this XMS blob type, copy this header name and paste it here under the name and the value will be block blob. So we'll type it here under the value block blob okay for the header section and our settings for the web activity 2 that is save output to blob is done so we are good to go and now we can validate the pipeline we can publish the changes now we can perform a debug run let's click on the debug So here are both web activities completed successfully. Let's go one by one and see the output. For the first one, we will see the output here, the same, which is fetched from the dummy REST API, all the IDs and the employer related data. Now we have the second web activity, save output to blob. Let's see the input for this. So we have the input, we have given the URL, URL of the storage account we have given the method and the other header body related details and it has fetched the data. You can see the method we have given headers in the body. We have given the output from the previous web activity. So it has taken the complete JSON output from the web activity one. And then let's go to the output here. And in the response, it has given us the response relevant details from the web activity. Now our job is to see the place where we have given the file to be created, right? We have given the file to be created as web activity output dot JSON inside the web activity output container. Okay. So we'll go back here and we'll go to the cloud knowledge containers and inside the web activity output folder. Let's wait. Yeah, so web activity output.json is created here. It is now appearing. We'll click on it. We'll click on edit. And now here we can see the same data 
of the employees id1 till 24 right and the other relevant details coming from the web activity so this is how we have fetched the rest api data through web activity and then used another web activity to save that json data which we have received through rest api to our storage account container in the form of a file okay thank you so much for watching the video for any queries do let me know in comments happy learning bye